purpose and mission. The fascinating reality is that God chooses many times unworthy people which the world can never comprehend. We can never understand why such a person, when we go to heaven only we'll know. So, he, you know, he chose a little girl called Mary to be the bearer of the very Messiah. He chose John the Baptist to be the one who would introduce that Messiah. He chose Saul of Tarsus, a murderer, to bring about two thirds of the New Testament. God has weaved a sovereign and designed plan in each and every one of our lives. That's a grand mystery. Today, I'm going to speak about the topic called to be a witness. How can one be a witness? What are the traits of a witness? So Acts 1.8, we can read this uh, key verse. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and the ends of the world. So not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, it's possible, Bible says. So Jesus is telling, unless you receive my power because of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be my witness. And again, Jesus says in Matthew 5.16, in the same way, let your light shine before men that let them see your good works and good deeds and glorify your God, your Father in heaven. So he is, he is giving the key to be a witness. One is how to be a witness. When people see us, people see us doing things, they are, they are look, <clears throat> their look will not be on our works because they know that we are unworthy vessels, so they'll just glorify the Father. It is just because of someone greater that this is happening. And why this happens? It's because of the Holy Spirit. So these are the two verses which are key behind how to be a witness and what should we do to be a witness. Jesus Christ is real. His impact on this world has exceeded that of anything. Everybody is familiar with his name. But do all know what his real mission was? Something that he is a teacher, but he's much more than a teacher. So who are the people that truly represent this Jesus today? What makes them different? What are the characteristics, traits of such people? So we can uh, say like faithfulness, perseverance, humility, integrity, and so on. Today, I'll just take some few traits and then give two reasons for this uh, call to be a witness. The first, uh, faithfulness. As we yesterday said, we spoke on call, chosen, and faithful. So faithfulness is given as one of the fruits of the Spirit. That's why you can read that without the power of the Holy Spirit, it's impossible. Jesus said that we will receive that power to witness. So many times people have the gifts, but they don't have the fruits. That's why they stumble. But this faithfulness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. We also studied about Joseph, how he was faithful in his calling. So that's why God made the dream that was given to him to come to pass. His life was not a fairy tale, like we think as an ascent from a pit to a palace. But from a vantage point, if you look back, we can see that God promoted him for a definite purpose through a chain of painful but divinely purposed events. Though he came from a dysfunctional family, he grew from an immature teen into a great leader who was handed the keys of authority in Egypt and who saved the entire Israelite population from starvation during a seven-year famine. You know, the redwood trees grow slowly and deliberately, but gains great strength and height and survives for centuries while bamboos grow slowly, but soon it fits with us. So that is why we need to be slow and steady. We will know the call in our life and we will move towards that call. We can see another aspect in Joseph's life. He dared to be different. Many times when God begins to show you things about yourself, about your life, about your calling, about your direction, about what he has put inside you, about the gift, you might look different. And some may actually 
beat you out they might put you down unless you're sure of that calling uh, you will move away from that calling that's very very important joseph never moved he was quite different and he dared to be different and that's why he could tell no to potiphar's wife who tried to seduce him because he was sure of his calling he was called for a higher purpose he wanted the pope presence of god to be always next to him that's why he god was always with him so he dared to be different so these are the two things we can see in joseph's life what we saw yesterday today next to faithfulness is perseverance when god offers an opportunity to serve him the choice is ours as we persevere with the grace of god the choice is not a one time decision we must maintain that choice we have to persevere till the end that's what matthew 24:13 says the book of revelation describes the end of this age when a great beast or powerful rulers will resist the lamb of god at his return they will make war with the lamb and the lamb will overcome them and for he is the lord of lords and king of kings and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful in revelation 17 12 to 14 you can read this called chosen and faithful those who are with christ are not only called and chosen but they are also faithful being called and chosen is not the end of the story because if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of jesus christ they should not again be entangled in it because the latter end is worse than the beginning that's what 2 peter 2 to 22 we can read it would have been better for them if they wouldn't have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them that's why we must be faithful to our calling and persevere till the end jesus compares uh, himself to a vine and his true followers to the branches he says abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you bear fruit without me without me you can do nothing he wants if anyone does not abide in me he is cast out so that's why in revelation 2:10 we read be faithful unto death death then you will get the crown of life hope for the christian is a certainty because it's grounded in god's promises and faithfulness that's why we persevere so faithfulness and perseverance are two sides of the coin many times we might desire something we might pray for something it might delay or it might not happen but we are not discouraged that's why the book of james says count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials or tribulations the testing of your faith produces steadfastness steadfastness as its full effect so that you will be perfect and complete lacking in nothing so perseverance is very important keep going up no matter how hard it gets no matter the pain or difficulty don't quit stay the course up never give up but unfortunately many people give up they give into mediocrity and they give into defeat and when the christian faith is rightly lived it will be relentless it will be persistent it's very very important god has designed a world where the secret to success it's not a secret it's discipline the cumulative impact of daily action repeated over time so that's when perseverance come into effect faithfulness and perseverance because there is enormous power in persistence that satan tries to destroy it today people are giving up pressures are mounting people are getting assaulted and assailed we see ministers big big ministers of god giving in compromising church is permitting perversion promoting false doctrines facilitating and affirming sins many times you know when a big oak falls down there are many small plants under that oak also dies that same thing we see again and again a big prominent minister of god falls away or gets into some sinful things many move away from faith so that's why perseverance is very very important because many will say jesus himself said many will say in that day lord lord have we not pro- prophesied in your name have we not cast out demons in your name 
have we not done many wonders in your name but i will tell them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness matthew 7:22 to 23 so satan has blinded the eyes of this world that's why many times people move away even after knowing about jesus i wanted to take you at a wonderful conversation given in 1 kings 19 the conversation is between elijah and elisha so elijah goes and meets this young elisha who was plow plowing elisha knows the end for his end is going to come so he takes his cloak and throws it onto the younger man and passes on the mantle young elish elisha knows exactly what this implication were and so he runs after elisha and asks him can i go and meet my parents and then come back elisha agrees and here you know he uh, he goes and meets them and then runs and comes back he goes from gilgal to jericho jericho to jordan jordan to bethel and all these places at the back of elisha so you know this all this finally elisha was he wants to see when elisha is taken up because he wants double portion of his spirit of the spirit that was on him he wanted double portion so only condition is he had to see him when he is taken up that is perseverance that's so important till the end if you remain you will be saved that's very very important so god says in isaiah chapter 40 have you not heard it have i not told you from the beginning have you not understood since the earth was founded that god sits enthroned above the circle of the earth and his people are like grasshoppers he brings princes to nothing rulers of this world to nothing this lord is the everlasting god he will neither grow tired nor weary and finally there is a beautiful verse those who hope in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint our perseverance comes because the lord is our strength the lord is our strength so we will soar on wings like eagles what a powerful uh, doctrine it is what a powerful truth that because we have a powerful god we will soar like eagles and philippians 2:6 again the next is humility you know because we depend on god everything we depend on our own there is no strength we get the humility there is no place for pride people might look at us and might think that this person might be prideful we cannot meet them but when they come to know a christian inner they will know that there is no pride because they the christian should know that every strength comes from the lord there is no strength in him because philippians 2:6 to 8 says who exists in the form of god he did not consider equality with god something as though something to be grasped but emptied himself taking the form of a servant being made in human likeness being found in the appearance of man he humbled himself and became obedient to death humility is the hallmark of a powerful witness so we saw faithfulness we saw perseverance we saw humility and the fourth one is integrity you know there are there were three waves of deportation of the jews to babylon in 606 bc 597 bc 586 bc then again there were three waves the israelites returned back to israel the first in 538 which was led by zerubbabel the second in 457 which was led by ezra and finally in 444 bc it was led by nehemiah god singled out nehemiah to rebuild that wall of jerusalem if you can read in the second chapter of nehemiah he says he goes to king attack sexes and he takes because he is a wine uh, taster the king will taste the wine only after nehemiah tasted what an integrity he should be having the king could trust this foreign man so after he tasted he is drinking it that's why king allowed him to go and come back the king he asked how much time you will take and nehemiah gives him time and the same way nehemiah goes there god gives him strategies and he finishes in just 52 days 
it should have taken so many years it was almost more than so many years people were trying to do that it was torn down for almost 152 years and 70 years israelites were trying to rebuild there was no success but this man you you can see in the 13th chapters he has around 11 times he is you can read that he, he was praying nehemiah prayed nehemiah prayed everything was dependent on his prayer life so that brings integrity faithfulness perseverance humility integrity and finally important thing is prayer life and god gives a burden in our heart when we pray god gives his burden as our burden and we will never lighten any load until we feel the pressure in our own soul so that's when god calls his people the first god raises up an individual to meet a particular need he always raises up individual you see big big mass movements but at the end you will see a little in person somewhere in the bottom most so god would have given his pressure his pain is desired into that person's heart so that's when he wants a person with integrity with humility with perseverance with faithfulness and who has a very beautiful prayer life in our life at various points we might have countless opportunities presented to us presented to us by god to do something significant with our own and worldly life such moments are remarkable life changing world altering they are divine in nature supernatural in potential eternal in significance it will be a moment confronted with a choice and action that we need to take that's when prayer comes into picture what is prayer finally cs lewis said somebody asked him that prayer is a monologue that just we keep talking to god lewis replied they tell me lord when i pray only one voice is heard that i'm dreaming you are not there that this whole thing is absurd maybe they are right maybe they are right if there is only one voice it's not my voice it's your voice i am not dreaming you are the dreamer and i am your dream prayer helps us to align our desires with that desire vision of god and ultimately it transforms us into the dream of god that's why prayer helps us to acknowledge god's sovereignty it helps us to condition and shape our hearts so that we can receive his will in our life when we pray more we get more in tune with the desire of god that's why a modern day sometimes ministry people think that we have to get ordained we have to go to some bible college we have to pastor a church or maintain an institution but actually the real ministry is to sit before god in prayer they because uh, when we don't sit before god we just have a paper of ordination in our hand it's just a mere paper that is not a ministry no human being no bishop no denomination can put anybody in a ministry it's only god who gives that ministry and that ministry starts with a prayer life that starts with a time when a person starts to behold worship god beholding is a very serious word it's not just a look it's a gaze it's just continuously gazing at something it's a very serious word in greek it's fixing the eyes it's making a decision i am not going to move from this position i am not going to go away unless you speak to me unless i want to hear your voice i'm not going to figure out on my own what's my career what's my next step of action unless you speak to me so that is the prayer life that is the ministry so now all these five traits if a person has how he will be able to become a real mission uh, witness of god that again comes from two things one is obedience to the call second is priority to the call so to, i am going to end my talk with talking about how can you be obedient to the call and how can we prioritize that call in our life so obedience to the call god does not speak to be heard he speaks to be obeyed he is like the control tower 
the pilot has constant communion with the control tower because the control tower is able to keep him from disasters which he himself cannot perceive when god speaks to us he is a control tower he can see what our narrow view point cannot see that's why when we listen to him we can avoid disasters john 10:27 says my sheep hears my voice i know them and they follow me the result of our relationship of our prayer life is that we can hear his voice it's a beautiful relationship and from that relationship birth us this listening to his voice no matter whatever the big decision god gives whatever great things god ask us to do if we listen to his voice he will give us a strategy because how he is going to speak to us through the word of god the word of god is living and active it is an eternal word the voice is eternally alive that speaks through the written word that's why we should never separate the voice from the word the printed word is eternally powerful because of the voice that speaks through it continually and when god speaks to it he expects us to obey you know the voice came to a wicked man called paul at that time he was a man he had a wicked scene he was blazing with anger he wanted to eliminate the whole church of god and this jesus appears to him he says i am jesus whom you are persecuting that day on the damascus road that man's life was transformed he became a man totally sold out for god god turned that murderer into a messenger persecutor into the greatest propounder of the gospel and he says lord what you want me to do that is the most important word when he meets jesus the first cry he gives is lord what will thou have me to do he wanted to do the will of god he wanted to get closer to god to know his will to do his will and that's when he became the greatest apostle of apostles and he wrote in galatians 2:20 i am crucified with christ and again in galatians 6:14 god forbid that i should glorify that the world in anything except but the cross the world is crucified to me i lost all my rights i resign to everything that is in the world because love so amazing love so divine caught me it's compelling me to the philippians he wrote in philippians 120 christ shall be magnified in my body whether it my life and death and whatever has happened to me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel his life was a beautifully exchanged life not i but christ he suffered the loss of everything he fought with wild beasts he lost, he was torn so many times he was almost closer to death but he said this one i do i will go on pressing towards the higher calling what christ has for me because love so amazing love so great as demands my everything you know the only freedom to get is to be bonded with christ when we are bonded with christ we are really free my freedom is the control given to god out of bondage of sin into out bondage with god sometimes we come out of sin but we don't get bonded with god and we again fall back we should be buried with christ have you seen the railway track it's control because of the two straps as i said the christian life also is something like that we have two aspects one is living and the other one is dying the living part is that time when we are plugged into heaven that we are in prayer time when we are living with god the dying time is that time when we go out and serve the fellow human being these are the two aspects of a christian life some try to die all the time they don't they wanted to work but they don't spend time with god so when their ministry overpowers their time with god everything goes away so both living and dying is very very important both spending time with god and to go out and serve is quite important the balanced christian life is very very important then we can respond to the call in our workplace when in our workplace in before the front line in our life when we work for the approval of god we work for him when our audience is one that is jesus christ we work 
with excellence. We give our control completely to God. We don't have any control. Might be they might not be giving promotion. It's okay. The control it's with God. We will do our work excellently. We can redeem business. We can redeem economics. We can redeem politics. These things belong to God. Everything belongs to God. Artificial intelligence belongs to God. God created science. We, that's why we just sometimes think that those things belong to Satan, but everything belongs to God. So I represent God in my workplace. This is what everybody should be there. Every Christian should be a right person in their workplace. So because when we worship God in our workplace, we will live as a pure, poor, proper witness for him. I am a businessman. I will be honest. I am working as a scientist. I'll be creative. All our life should be converged to that as a worship service. Everything should be like a worship service. It should not be segmented. Like I will have a secular divide. I This is a secular part where God is not there. This is a sacred part where God is there. Every part of life is a, uh, is a worship. So that's when, when we are obedient to God and we give our life full control to God, we give the second aspect, priority to his call. Perhaps the greatest biblical account is found. I love this uh, chapter, Acts 24. Here you can have a beautiful verse. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drasila, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go the, your way this time, for I, when I have a convenient season, I will call for you. You know, you can see here two things. One is, Felix is not giving the priority to God. He's delaying. He's telling, go away, go away. He's getting scared. But you can see on the other side, Paul. Paul rejoiced at the opportunity to proclaim Christ before this person. It did not matter that this person was powerful or influential. It only mattered that he was lost. The gospel had to be preached with enthusiasm. Jewish Drasila, the daughter of Herod Agrippa, had first married a Gentile, but now he left that person and sitting with Felix on the throne. He, those two, um, the symbol of sin, is now sitting before this man called Paul, who is in chains on his arms. His body is scarred with the marks because of the suffering of Christ. He's wearing a coarse garment, a lonely ambassador for Christ. <coughs> this lonely ambassador for Christ, as he talk of righteousness, self-control, and judgment, for Felix trembled. Don't come now. Don't speak now. I'll call for you. So the moment of truth has passed away. So Felix has lost his moment. He had grown cold in his heart. This is our time. We can have accidents. We might not live tomorrow. So this is our time that there is no guarantee that we will see tomorrow. When the voice of God calls us, we must never postpone to tomorrow. Am I seizing the moment to be successful, to witness to Jesus, to people around me? Am I seizing the moment to be his follower? And telling everything is lost compared to this Christ. So this is today I wanted to just nail to this point with this hymn. That's a great hymn. There is a love constraining me to go and seek the lost. I yield, O Lord, my all to thee to save at any cost. Charles Wesley seemed to reach the highest point when he said, Nothing on earth do I desire but your pure love within my breast. Amy Kermakail said, give me a love that leads the way, a faith that nothing can dismay. These men and women were certainly on the trail of a apostolic secret of soul winning. Great soul winners are great lovers of men's soul. That's why Philippians uh, Paul says, press on towards the goal to win the praise of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. I will not stop until I lay hold of what God has for me. 
This is very, very important. Christianity is not a simple solution to our problems. He has determined that we should be agents of change in this world. He determines, God determines that he's going to empower us to display his loving message to the world. That's when he turns us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So we need to be different. How would we live if probably we know what we have only 30 days to live? we would make every opportunity count. God instructs us to take a close look at how we are living and to take every opportune moment to invest in the eternal. Take time to contemplate your life. You are a child of God. You should be the light. Be careful in how you live. Do not be unwise but wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. So soon one life, it will be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. Only one life, it will be passed soon, but what is done for Christ will last. On uh, January 13, 1877, CT Stark recently received that time 1,45,000 from an inheritance. He put it in the Bank of Heaven. He continued his work in China as a poor missionary. And he also he brought the China, many people in China to uh, Christ. And then he came to India. He pioneered a great work in Africa and finally end, uh, died at the age 70. And that work became the worldwide evangelization crusade. Only one life, it will soon be passed. What is done for Christ will lost. So let's close our eyes and pray. Precious Father, thank you for speaking to us. Make us a powerful witness wherever you have planted us, Father. Today, whoever have listened, something different, let it change in their hearts. Transform them. Let your spirit be poured powerfully on them, O oh Jesus. Let your spirit empower them, Jesus. And in their schools, in their colleges, in their workplace, let them live for your glory. Let people know that this person is different. And Lord, we will remain faithful to you and with integrity we'll serve you lord so people will look at us and and glorify the father in heaven thank you jesus that you're going to empower everybody we give this time into your hands in the wonderful and mighty name of jesus i pray amen yeah sister this is with respect, respect your talk yesterday's there was a very practical question what are the tips you would say how did you balance with such a hectic job your theological studies? You answered something yesterday that you applied for permission. And I concluded by saying, praise God, company never gave you permission for research in theology. Otherwise, we would not have seen you here. You would have been a theologist, never an evangelist or a preacher. So thank God. But the question is, how, how did you find time? What is those tips that you would like to give to all the working people balancing time? family and then finding time to read and study the word of God with having responsibility at home and then taking a rest. Actually, that's what I said. God gives, makes us to have a disciplined life. Unless we think that this is the time I need to go to sleep, I have to get up and have to spend some time with the Lord and read at least this many chapters. And like that, we need to have some discipline. If you don't have the discipline, uh, many times, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow, and we will finally never spend time to read the Word of God. And it's always good to learn about many things about the Word of God. When you find out uh, like proper Bible study, a proper way of analyzing the scriptures. It's very, very important. And that's when, for me, Master of Divinity helped me. And uh, so uh, sometimes it's very good to go into theological studies, but in the right college, in the right way, I would say. And better to sit before God. Sometimes even no need to go before sit before God. And we have a lot of tools available in the net. Just sit before God if you don't understand. Have a better Bible study is very, very, very important. And sitting before God, because that's a discipline. And uh, we need to spend time with our family. Family is the highest priority. We can never ignore the family. That also God taught me because my children are from God. And unless we give time to children, and that also, again, you get from God, because sometimes we spend a lot of time with children, and that might not be a quality time. But if you sit with God, God will give even a small mistake. Sometimes my sons do 
God somehow will reveal it to me. So that's when they'll come to know that this person will find out. So this sort of small, small tips I can tell that God um, helps us to give time to family, uh, give time to work. And when I'm driving back, I pray. So um, something like that, I balance. Thank you. This is the second point that you spoke was on perseverance. That is pers persistence till the end, you said. Okay. Now, how do we develop this perseverance? Because persistence is not found mostly in believers. How do we develop it? So never give up. Uh, because Bible clearly says those who trust on the Lord will rise up as with wings like eagles. So perseverance comes because we have a God whom we can believe, his character, his promises. They are so very, very important for a believer because his promises are S and amen in Christ Jesus. And his character, many times we fall away because even I had my fist against God once upon a time. At that time, I was not a real believer. I have never much read the Bible except some few Psalms. Uh, but I used to believe that if I am good, God has to answer me. So I try to be good in my own way. But Bible says, no, not even one person is righteous. But in those days, I had that work gospel in me. So I tried to be good and I asked God. God did not answer me. So I had my fist against God. I walked away from God, walked towards the path of suicide till God had to reveal himself in a deathbed on ventilator and tell that he's giving me new life. Afterwards, I understood that we can trust his character when we go through problems. Sometimes if God looks so silent, the, the, the days look so dark, it's difficult. Nobody will understand. Nothing can happen. Nobody can comfort. But we know this God knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. That's when we can trust him. He's good. He's good all the time. We can only see the tip of the iceberg, but God sees everything. So I can rest upon him. And that's when I will not give up. I will persevere till the end. So depending on the character of God and the promises of God are quite important.